This week, we did see an enormous shift in local police policy. The chokehold like carotid restraint used by law enforcement to render someone unconscious, long a target of police reform activists, is now banned in agencies across San Diego County. San Diego City Council Member Monica Montgomery joins me now with more. Council Member, I want to start by asking quite simply, what are you feeling right now? Oh, I'm feeling a lot of hurt and pain and anger. Um, I am feeling hope um, that we can have a better city that really does treat everyone equally. Um, but it, this has been a really hard time. It really has. Um, it has been a really hard time. Well, and I want to talk about that hope. Um, on Monday, you stood with the San Diego police chief, with San Diego's mayor, and announced the end of the chokehold-like carotid restraint. And by the end of the week, all policing agencies in the county followed suit. Did you ever imagine that would happen like this? I did not. Um, I really wish it would not have had to happen this way after such an excruciating death of George Floyd. Um, but it did happen, you know, it happened. And we, I, I'm grateful for that. I really am. I'm grateful that it happened. And um, I am hopeful, you know, that we can continue on in police reform. There is so much to be done, but that wave that you just spoke about uh, was quite encouraging. Well, and just to pick that thread even more, I mean, will something like this, will taking, you know, as police unions and police departments have always said, a tool like this away from them, will that mean that when black men and women have interactions with police, they maybe can breathe a little easier? I'm hopeful of that. Uh, you know, these are policy changes that I am very grateful for, but overall policing communities of color, there is a culture within our law enforcement that does demean people of color. And it is not just in uh, police departments and law enforcement, it is in our entire country. So these are matters of the heart. If we don't see each other as human beings, there, you know, it could be worse lethal force that is used on someone um, of color specifically. And so we have to change not only the policies, but we have to change the culture. And we have to do a lot of work as San Diegans, as Californians, as you know, residents of our entire country to change the way we look at each other and the way we communicate. That is very prevalent right now in policing, but it's across the board. It's really across the board. So let's talk more about that and what the future may hold for San Diego and policing. You and Council President Gomez are pushing for an independent police practices uh, commission with investigators, with subpoena power. You're hoping to see this on the November ballot. Why is this measure crucial to the police reform fight? So first of all, this is something that um, I, from day one, have uh, championed and, and been an advocate for with community partners such as the Earl B. Gilliam Bar Association and Women Occupy. I think over 40 organizations have now uh, signed on to this, including youth organizations like Mid-City Can. And so it has been a community-led grassroots effort that I was fortunate enough to pick up when, when I was elected. So that from day one, we have really been working on this. And it does include uh, an independent commission with independent legal counsel um, that is totally separate and apart from the city of San Diego. You know, it has investigatory powers and it has subpoena power. And on the day that I was inaugurated, I, I said that these are the things that we are going to fight for. And I was very clear about that. It has not changed. George Floyd uh, and this incident has ex exacerbated our need and really highlighted our need for this type of reform. But this has been a fight that I've been fighting and a lot of other advocates in this space for years when it was so unpopular to talk about the rights of people that may be in jail or prison or the rights of people who are arrested. It was like a, you know, if it didn't affect the majority of folks, nobody wanted to talk about it. It was uncomfortable. You know, we're at this point now though, where the rubber has to meet the road. And so we have to relook at the way that we've always done things 
but it's very important to note there are a lot of people that have been fighting for this for a very, very long time. And we cannot silence their voices as they push for more of this type of reform. Council Member, the last thing I want to ask you, are you optimistic that the energy and passion and allyship of this moment will last beyond this month? I'm optimistic. I am. I am hopeful. But I also know that continuous work has to be done. We let this moment pass by not acknowledging uh, systemic racism in our systems, in our institutions, then there will be no alliance coming out of this. But if we have that first step where we acknowledge that uh, systemic racism and what it has done to our families and to our communities and the impact that it has on the entire nation, then we can move forward together the way and have the America, uh, the San Diego that we all want. But we have to do that. Straight ahead on Politically Speaking, my conversation with City Attorney Mara Elliott on police reform and an $88 million deal. Stay with us.